One-time MotoGP race winner Andrea Iannone will make his Grand Prix comeback in Malaysia with the VR46 Ducati team as Fabio Di Antonio's replacement. After badly dislocating his left shoulder during the Austrian Grand Prix weekend, Di Antonio announced last week in Australia that he would be ending his season early to have surgery. Di Antonio's final race of 2024 was the Thai GP, in which he was fourth on his VR46 run GP23 Ducati. Since announcement of his season-ending surgery, which will take place this Saturday, rumors have been rife that former MotoGP rider Yanone was in contention to replace Di Antonio for the final races. The VR46 squad has confirmed that Yanone will ride in place of Di Antonio in Malaysia, though has yet to announce him for Valencia. Pertamina Enduro VR46 Racing Team Andrea Iannone last raced in MotoGP in 2019 when he was an Aprilia rider, but was retroactively disqualified from that year's Malaysian and Valencia GPs after he was served with a doping ban. The 2016 Austrian GP winner was found to have ingested a banned anabolic steroid, which he said came from meat contamination while in Malaysia in 2019. However, this defense was rejected during appeal proceedings and the World Anti-Doping Agency successfully had Yanone's ban extended to the maximum of four years. That expired in time for the 2024 racing season, with Yanone earning a place on the World Superbike grid with Go11 Ducati and managed to win in his rookie campaign. Riding the world champion bike is exciting, Yanone said. MotoGP is the most technological and high-performance bike, I'm honored that they thought of me and I felt like I had to say yes to this opportunity immediately as soon as it was offered to me. The challenge is certainly crazy, complex and demanding, as I haven't ridden a bike in this category for years and without having done tests or similar. I'm excited to be able to work with Ducati and the Pertamina Enduro VR46 racing team, both for the very high level and for the friendship since years. I thank Valentino Rossi, Alessio Salucci, Pablo Nieto, Gigi Deligna, Claudio Domenicli, and Mauro Gracilli. Uccio Salucci, team director for VR46, added, I am very happy to confirm that Andrea will race with our colors on the Ducati Desmosetis IGP. First of all, Andrea has shown to be in great shape, he closed the World SBK season on a high and has always remained close to Ducati. He is a great friend of the VR46 family, both mine and Vale's. We are very happy to welcome him to the Pertamina Enduro VR46 racing team and to see him back on a MotoGP bike. It's a really great story. At the same time, we all wish Fabio the best of luck as he will undergo shoulder surgery this week and we can't wait to see him back on track in 2025. In a statement issued to Crash.net, Wada said this on Yanone's return, under the terms of the World Anti-Doping Code, once an athlete has served the imposed period of ineligibility, he or she is free to return to participation. The level of competition is not relevant to this. Jack Miller came within two laps of claiming his first KTM MotoGP podium of the season in the Thai MotoGP. The Australian used the Sunday rain to scythe from 15th on the grid to 7th in the opening laps. That included a pass on Gasca's rookie Pedro Acosta, followed by Frankie Morbidelli and Red Bull teammate Brad Binder. When Marc Marquez crashed out, Miller was promoted into a potential first MotoGP rostrum since Harris 2023. But Acosta retaliated in the closing stages, prizing the podium from Miller's grasp after an entertaining back-and-forth battle. Struggling badly for front grip, VR46's Fabio Di Antonio demoted Miller to fifth on the final lap. The first couple laps were pretty hairy, Miller began. I was starting 15th and didn't get the greatest starts either. I ran without the front, hole shot, device, just didn't want to spin the thing up on the line. And then the spray was pretty hectic. I was trying to avoid the carnage as well, a lot of blokes were losing the rear and whatnot. So the pack split a little bit. I was able to find my way through, settled in fourth and then when Mark threw it down, I was, third. But I was really suffering at the front end, it was like I'd cooked the front tire. So all my roll speed, through the corners, was pretty much gone. I was really having to park it, pick it up and get, upright, on the exit. Then probably with three to go, she had nothing left in the center of the tire. I was getting hunted. I tried to throw everything I could at it. I really wanted that podium today, but it wasn't to be. Just those first couple of laps trying to get through the pack cost us and probably put the most stress on the tire.
Recalling the close fight with Acosta, who will take over his factory seat next season, Miller grinned. I was throwing everything I had at it, honestly. He went for the inside and we sort of nudged each other on the exit of, turn, three and then towards four and I was on the outside and thought, this is going to go one of two ways, I'm either gonna make it or I'm not. Because I'd been losing the front every lap there. Just as you start cracking the gas on, the front would go. So I thought, oh well. What better spot to really test the front than where I'd been losing it every lap? I was able to get it done, but he came back at me at five. I tried to square him up again, but wasn't quite able to make it. And that was that. I was just throwing everything I could at it, almost like a bit of a roadblock there. I also swapped the engine map near the end. We had a map with a little less TC, but to be honest it was probably worse, just because I was spinning far too much in a straight line. But we stayed on, showed good grit. With hindsight, and having only the 10-minute warm-up to find a wet setting, Jack Miller revealed he should have gone for an even shorter race setup. We improved from this morning, we went 8 millimeters shorter and I probably would have gone another 3 in the rear end of the bike just to try and get that drive grip, he said, referring to a shorter wheelbase loading the rear tire under acceleration. Kind of wasn't really rotating enough, wait, onto the rear. Easy to say now, but we made a big step after warm-up and probably could have gone a little bit more in that direction. Nonetheless, such knowledge could prove vital if rain is again a factor during this weekend's sepping round or the Valencia finale. It is what it is, you've got to get on with it, Miller said of riding a MotoGP bike fast in the wet. Try to feel what's happening underneath you. That's the beauty of the MotoGP bikes nowadays with these carbon brakes, you're not pulling a stupid amount of pressure on the lever. You're kind of nursing it and playing with the grip. You get a really good feeling of what's happening on the bike in the wet, now, both when I was on the Ducati and obviously now with the KTM. So I enjoy it. You've kind of got to ride to the grip available. Picking the bike up and all that, it's just fun. Furman Eldiger has suffered an injury which threatens his participation in the postseason MotoGP test. Moto2 rider Eldiger has already signed a contract with Ducati and will step into the Premier class in 2025 with Grazzini. His debut on a MotoGP bike next year, he will ride a year-old spec Ducati, was due to be at the Valencia test, in the days after the final round of the season. But Aldegar crashed on the first lap of the Moto2 race in Thailand. He requires surgery on his left hand, and a return date can't yet be confirmed. I'm disappointed with how my race ended, he posted to social media. I had good expectations and instead it went the way it went. The impact with Tony Arbolino was hard and I regret how things went. Now I have to focus on my recovery and I hope to get back on track as soon as possible. I'm coming home earlier than expected, but I'll try to get back on track in Valencia. I'll keep you informed. Missing the Valencia test or riding compromised would be a less than ideal start to his MotoGP career for Aldegar.